In this video, we'll write the Lewis structure for Ca3P2. This is calcium phosphide. So we have calcium, that's a metal. The phosphorus is a nonmetal. So this is going to be an ionic compound. Electrons are going to be transferred from the metal to the nonmetal. So let's write three calcium atoms and then the two phosphorus atoms. Calcium, that's in group two on the periodic table. It's going to have two valence electrons. So each calcium has two valence electrons. Phosphorus is in group 15, sometimes called 5A. It has five valence electrons, each phosphorus. Since we have metal and nonmetal bonded together, this is an ionic bond. These electrons, they'll be transferred. So calcium will move one here, here, this calcium here. And you can see why we need three calcium atoms to complete the octet on the two phosphorus atoms. So now each phosphorus, that has eight valence electrons. That's very stable. And because the phosphorus, each phosphorus gained three valence electrons, electrons are negative, each phosphorus will have a three minus charge. Each calcium lost two electrons, two valence electrons, so each calcium becomes two plus. And since we have these positive charges, these negative charges, opposite charges attract, and that's what's going to form our ionic bond in the Ca3P2 Lewis structure. Because the electrons were transferred, they're not shared between the phosphorus and the calcium atoms, let's put brackets around each phosphorus. Often you'll see brackets around the positive ions as well. So this is the Lewis structure for Ca3P2, calcium phosphide. Note that if we had solid calcium phosphide, a sample of calcium phosphide, it would be a crystal. So this formula unit here, we'd have a number of these in a repeating pattern. That's our crystal. But this is useful to see how the electrons were transferred from the calcium atoms to the phosphorus and why we need three calcium atoms and two phosphorus atoms. This is Dr. B with the Ca3P2 Lewis structure. Thanks for watching.